Okay, my friends, welcome back to another installment of what I believe is my very favorite, my best content. I mean, I don't know. It's like choosing your favorite child, right? All my content is incredible and amazing and great. It's so hard for me to choose just one piece of my already amazing content to single out as the favorite, but I think my tier list might be the best. And so today we're back for another tier list, which is the side project tier list in which we will go down a list of uh, well-known side projects and super groups in the world of rock and metal. And we'll ask ourselves, where do they rank? S, A, B, C, or F? We just, we got rid of the D and E tiers because let's be real. If you put something on the D tier or the E tier, you might as well just put it on the F tier, right? D tier, E tier, it's the same as F tier. So let's just cut the BS. Let's just go right to it. So anyway, let's start with one of my favorite side projects. Really quick, before we go any further, have you checked out my Patreon? Patrons get early access to all my main channel videos and my podcasts. I also do giveaways sometimes. For example, I just gave away a pair of these Eargasm earplugs. And if you want me to review your music, there's a way to do that as well. All you gotta do is join at the $10 and up level, then every month I do a call for submissions. If you want me to review something, all you you gotta do is drop it in the comments of that post then i will review it live on twitch and post it on patreon for everyone to see so if that sounds cool hit the link in the description of this video and i appreciate your support let's start with one of my favorite side projects angels and airwaves tom delong's side project where he said hey what if you had a delay pedal but you also got abducted by aliens <laughs> that would be Angels and Airwaves, when he discovered hollow body guitars and his love for aliens, that's when we realized, you know, they had the song Aliens Exist on Enema of the State. And we all thought he was joking about the alien stuff. And then he started Angels and Airwaves. And then we we're like, oh, he wasn't joking about the alien stuff. He really does want to go to space. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to like it because anytime you see the hollow body guitars and anytime you see the delay pedals from a guy that used to be in a punk band, it's a sign of trouble. That means nine times out of 10, it's going to be boring and awful, like just dreary, like butt rock or post punk or something like that. But I got to say angels and airwaves pretty great. I think angels and airwaves, I would not say they're an S tier band on their own. Whereas like Blink is just a straight up S tier band, but my expectations are lowered for side projects because they almost always suck. So I would say within the context of side projects, I'm gonna put them in the S tier. I actually really like Angel and Airwaves quite a bit. And uh, you know, I was really surprised that the new Angels and Airwaves stuff is actually really good. Very catchy, right? Much better than I thought it was going to be. And, you know, let's be honest, Blink without Tom, it's kind of mid. So I think we realize, in hindsight, actually, Tom was the, uh, the real key to Blink being awesome. So I'm going to put him on the S tier. Again, within the context of side projects, I would say they're an S tier band. Something that's maybe not quite as good... <laughs> Psycho Sinner. This was Jeremy from Five Finger Death Punch. Quit the band to uh, start this new band that was originally called Psychosexual, which is one of the absolute worst band names I have ever heard. Just sounds like straight up local band name. They, for some reason, rebranded it to Psycho Sinner, and somehow it's actually even worse than uh, you would guess from the name or from the photos. It's just, it's shockingly bad. Looking like the Will Ferrell devil from SNL. <laughs> it's like a, a deaf person trying to sound like typo negative. Want to make love on the grave. This looks like one of those inflatable like pitchforks that you win at the fair. You know, if you throw like a tennis ball into the little rigged basketball hoop. And if you do that three times, you get one of the inflatable devil's pitchfork things. I feel like he just took it straight from the county fair right to the video set. <laughs> really shockingly bad. Even in the context of like, if you said, hey, 
the drummer for Five Finger Death Punch started a new band called Psycho Sinner. You would think, oh man, that's probably really bad. It's worse even than that. Even going into it with such low expectations, it's even worse than that. So I, I think we got to put that on an F tier. I mean, it either goes on the F tier for being just truly horrible or it goes on the S tier for being so awful that it's actually great. But I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and put it on the F tier. That's what I think. Okay, next. How about Velvet Revolver? You guys remember Velvet Revolver? This is uh, Slash and Duff from Guns N' Roses with Scott Weiland from uh, Stone Temple Pilots. Uh, I forget who the drummer is. I don't remember. Slither? Yeah, Slither is a good song. That's true. I think this song's fucking good. This band is very underrated. Oh, it's Matt Sorum on drums. Okay. And the butt rock baddies all over the place. I feel like this is what Guns N' Roses should have sounded like after Appetite for Destruction and after Use Your Illusion. Axel spent like fucking, what, 15 or 20 years or some shit making Chinese democracy, which was absolutely horrible and didn't sound like Guns N' Roses at all. Meanwhile, everyone else in the band was like, you know what? We're just going to go with Scott Weiland. We're just going to make the album that Guns N' Roses should have made. I think this is a great LA, like butt rock, hair metal kind of band. They're really good. Very underrated. You don't hear their name come up too much. And uh, I think they're damn good. A damn good band. You know what? Their singles are really good. The album stuff, not quite as good. I would put them on the A tier under Angels and Airwaves. Um, but uh, damn good band. Very underrated. Especially for side pro super groups. Super groups maybe have an even worse track record than side projects. Because, you know, you get that many big egos in a band. Um, and it almost always is going to be awful. And they are one of the rare examples when it actually was good. Now, speaking of big egos, how about your man, CMFT, Corey M. Effing Taylor? Ladies and gentlemen, may you remember I this? You remember Corey M. Effing Taylor, the Ford F-150 commercial? This summer, save up to 20% off brand new Ford F-150s, 4.5% on approved credit. This looks like an Ink Master transition. Where's the rapping? Here we go. Corey Taylor, the real lyrical, spiritual, miracle individual. I almost feel bad for him because that album is so bad that it just honestly it just should never have been released. And I just feel bad for him that nobody was like, bro, don't do it. Come on, man. Just I know you put a lot of work into this, but trust me, don't put CMFT out. Don't do it, man. But it's still better than Psycho Center. So I'll put it in the C tier. Definitely better than Psycho Center, at least. There is that. Oh, here's a good one. Here's a good one. You're going to like this one. Do you guys remember the VH1 show Supergroup? This was Ted Nugent, Sebastian Bach, Scott Ian from Anthrax, uh, Evan from Biohazard, and Jason Bonham, the son of John Bonham. One of the most amazing moments on reality TV ever. Evan Seinfeld playing Punishment by Biohazard on an unplugged hollow potty guitar for Ted Nugent, who is definitely not impressed. It's kind of like this. See, I can do that. <laughs> Playing air drums. I don't know if Ted's ever heard anything like Biohazard before. It's very ominous and demonic. There's a pause. Very ominous and I demonic. It's not me. It only happens to others. I can't deny reality. <laughs> Some real clashing of egos on a king size bed. <laughs> I don't think heavy metal is sexy at all. And even the girls that like heavy metal are just pretty skanky and dirty. And well, he's right about that. And the band is even worse than you might think. I mean, it sounds like a local band. It really does. Drunk Uncle Cor. I mean, it's just insane that with these people, all incredibly fucking talented musicians, with these five people on the band, it sounded that bad. I think it's just, you know, you get five egos that big in the same room. Nobody can agree on anything. And I don't know, really, truly, truly shockingly bad. Um, do they even have a logo? I don't know. Let's look. Even their name is horrible. Damnocracy. Get it? Like democracy, but damnocracy. Get it? Government is bad. Get it, guys? Pretty awful. But I would say 
Still better than Psycho Center. I'm going to put it on the C tier next to C, M, F, and T. That's what I think. Uh, it's bad. Their riffs are demonic, at least. That's true. Even the name is local band. It is. Everything. Like, how do you get those guys in the same room and you come out with a local band? That's my question. Another good one. A classic of the mid-2000s. Or maybe it's 2001. I don't know. Fieldy from Korn's side project, Fieldy's Dreams. As heard on their first album, Rock and Roll Gangster. Alone at home, laying in my bed. You have voices in my head. I can't cope with this pain. This sounds like somebody who was inspired by Cottonmouth Kings to become a rapper. Like someone who's been listening to Cottonmouth Kings for like 10 years. And it's like, you know what? I could do that too. This is what they would make. It does sound like a Lonely Island song. The only thing better than this, did you guys know that he had his own signature shoe from Tribal? Did you guys know that? Is there anything more new metal than Fieldy's signature shoe by Tribal? I feel like that is the most new metal thing that has ever been made. <laughs> In fact, you know what? I'm going to use this. I am so inspired by the fact that this exists that um, I I'm going to use that on our list. I'm going to say... Um, I'm sorry, Fieldy. You seem like a lovely guy, but uh, Fieldy's Dreams is uh, on the Psycho Center level, I would say. It's pretty terrible. I'm sorry, Fieldy. You seem like a lovely guy. We can be friends. Fieldy's Dreams was not good. I would delete it. Okay, for those who don't know, Infectious Grooves was the side project of Mike Muir from Suicidal Tendencies with uh, Rob Trujillo and some other people, um, Dean from Excel, uh, I think maybe one of the other guys from Excel also, their um, funk metal project. I wouldn't say that it's good, but holy fuck, these guys can play. My God, listen to this bass line. It's a terrible song, but holy shit, listen to that. That is ridiculous. The drummer, by the way, is Brooks Wackerman of Avenged Sevenfold and Bad Religion. And we're the same age, so I think he was 15 or 16 when he was playing on this shit. And this is not fucking easy to play. These guys are insane musicians. Let's see if we can find Little Brooks. There he is. Look, Little Brooks. Little Brooks in like 10th grade. I mean, it's horrible. It sounds like... They're playing three different songs at the at the same time, and none of them are good. So I would say that the the band, on a musical level, well, they do have a song though that's pretty good. To be fair, this song "Punk It Up" is pretty good. This is pretty good. This sounds like a Suicidal Tendencies song. This song's pretty good. I believe that the drummer on this is Stephen Perkins from Jane's Addiction who's also an extremely fucking good drummer. So I don't know how Mike Muir convinced Brooks Wackerman and Stephen Perkins to play this awful music with him, but uh, both of them are amazing drummers. And Rob Trujillo, obviously one of the best metal bassists ever. And Josh Fries, yeah. He's got amazing musicians in his band. So is it good? Well, I don't know if we could go so far as to say that Infectious Grooves music is good. That might be a little bit of an overstatement, but I will say that at least... It's not terrible. The guys can play their fucking asses off. So for that reason, I'll put it on the B tier, which maybe is a little bit generous. But would you rather listen to Infectious Grooves or Damocracy or CMFing T? Right? You'd rather listen to Infectious Grooves. So I think a B tier is fair. Next up, we have Transplants. Uh, or, as I should say, Transplants uh, with Tim Armstrong from Rancid. And, uh, and Travis Barker from Blink-182 playing like, kind of like drum and bass music for punk rock kids. That's what Transplants is all about. And Ezek's cousin, Skinhead Rob. The Shampoo commercial song, that's right. I love this album. I think it's awesome. Take a 
Come on, shots in the car come alone i think this album is really cool i've still really never heard anything like it before or since travis barker said that his original concept was drum and bass music for punk kids which is really what it is um tim armstrong in my opinion might be the single best songwriter in all of punk it's definitely weird and I can see why people wouldn't like it because it is kind of strange. But man, I think it's awesome. I love this album. They have another album that I think is pretty good too. Um, but this one is great. I listened to it a ton at the time. I think Transplants is a very good band. Maybe not great, but I would say I think they're very good. So I would put them up there. I would put them up there with Velvet Revolver. I'll put them on the A tier because it's pretty damn good stuff. You know, to me, the barometer is what I still like this, even if I didn't know who the people were. And uh, yeah, I would. I like it quite a bit. How about Down featuring everybody's favorite, totally not racist guy, Phil Anselmo from Pantera. I think this is the song that I like. I think. Phil Anselmo from Pantera with uh, one of the guys from Corrosion of Conformity. And I forget who else. I mean, they got the riffs, that's for sure. Kirk from Crowbar and Pepper from Corrosion of Conformity, right? That's what it is. I love this one. It's a great song. This album really kind of came out of nowhere because at this time, you know, sludge metal really wasn't popular at all outside of the like super gross dysfunctional weirdos that were into stuff like grief and i hate god as i've said before if you listen to grief or i hate god you should seek help <laughs> you should seek help that's not a good sign and then this album came out and really made everyone sort of care about this sound because it sounded fucking awesome corrosion of conformity and crowbar and phil anselmo those are like three of the best people to ever like touch this genre. So I'm not a big fan of sludge metal in general, but I will say, I think this album does it as well as it can be done. Not as good as Pantera by any means, because, um, you know, politics aside, Pantera is a great band. Uh, obviously, you know, it's been disappointing to see Phil and even Dimebag. It's been disappointing to see them, uh, you know, kind of show their colors as what they probably were all along. I didn't want to admit it to myself that they were like that, but they, you know, they sort of showed who they are. I would say down, they go in the A tier to me. Good, good band. Or you think S tier? You guys think S tier? I don't, I don't know. Okay, fine. 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 You bullied me into it. If we're going to call Angels and Airwaves S tier, I guess down belongs in the S tier. They're as good as Angels and Airwaves. I think that's fair. Speaking of blink side projects, how about plus 44, the side project with uh, Mark Hoppus and Travis Barker. This is during the time when everybody in Blink was doing a bunch of side projects because they didn't get along. And uh, Travis Barker is such a great drummer that everyone had Travis play on their side project and things got kind of weird this was mark's side project during a time where i i sort of thought that mark was the creative genius of blank i liked boxcar racer quite a bit and i was really looking forward to this because like i was like oh it's mark's thing this is gonna be the best because i like mark's voice the best this is gonna be amazing and it was good um but it, I don't know. It just it, it wasn't quite there for me. This sounds to me a lot like the Blink stuff with Matt Skiba in the band, which makes sense because, you know, that's Mark as the primary songwriter. I love Mark. He seems like a wonderful human. I would literally die for him. I love you, Mark. If you happen to watch this, I want to be your friend. But if I'm being honest, I think Tom is the better songwriter. And I think uh, plus 44, definitely good, but not great. That's my opinion of it. I would put it on the B tier. I mean, it sounds bad to put it on the same tier as Infectious Grooves. I think plus 44 is better than Infectious Grooves, but I don't think it's as good as Transplants. So I feel like uh, I feel like the B tier is fair. Still, nothing but respect for Mark. I, I love you, Mark. I feel like I violated our friendship and trust by putting this on the B tier, but I got to keep it real. How about the last one? I'll say it like this. You know what I like is the white people who go to Chipotle and say things with like a weird like fake hispanic accent because they took spanish in college 
and the guy working behind the counter is Mexican and they really want him to like them. So they're like, uh, yeah, a bean burrito on a uh, wheat tortilla. Oh, this reminds me of when I went, when I went to Nicaragua. <laughs> And I met the, the coolest guy. He sold tortillas too. And the guy behind the counter is like, uh, yeah, okay. Do you want white rice or brown rice? Just please leave. <laughs> Anyway, Brujeria, or Brujeria, as the white people at Chipotle would say, is a very funny band, very a concept band that was supposed to be, the story is that they were like Mexican drug dealers who were also like satanic cultists. So they all wore these masks. Nobody knew their real identity. And it was like, oh, these uh, Mexican drug dealers started this satanic death metal band called Brujeria and like they're on the run from the cops so they can't show their faces and the album was also good their first album was called Matando Hueros which means like kill whitey and they were good and listen to those riffs it's like really shitty but really great like grindcore and then it turns out that the members of the band were not nearly as demonic as we thought they were. It's uh, Dino from Fear Factory on guitar, Jim from Down By Law, I think on bass, I don't remember. And one of the guys from Faith No More was in the band as well. I'm like, wait a minute, Brujeria, they're not Mexican drug dealers. It's fucking Dino, oh, and Raymond from Fear Factory. It's Dino and Raymond from Fear Factory with the guy from fucking Faith No More and Down By Law, what the fuck? And Shane from Napalm Death, I think. They've had a million people in the band over the years. But anyway, I think Brujeria is great and amazing. I think their first two albums are incredible. They trolled everybody, and it was great. I was a teenager at the time, and I like I bought all the lore. I was like, oh, there are these scary Mexican drug dealers. Like, wow, this is so edgy. I bought all of it. I thought it was all legit, and then, uh, and then I found out. I got tricked just like everybody else. I would say... They're a good, solid B-tier band, you know? I mean, they're basically a shit post band, so they're not supposed to be good. They're like mediocre in the best way. Absolutely love the band. Fantastic. Very mediocre in the best possible way. So there it is. Brujeria belongs in the B-tier, but as I've said before, the B tier is the real S tier. The A tier is really the C tier. The C tier is the F tier. The F tier is just the F tier. And uh, the B tier is really the S tier. As I've said before, it's very simple. So that does it for today's episode of uh, the Side Project tier list. Join us next time for another episode where we'll look at your favorite rock and metal side projects and supergroups. And we will ask the question, where do they belong on the tier list? It's very ominous and demonic.